Yo Mama's Collective, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. My baby was up really late last night because she got some new teeth. Bless her heart. So I'm a little tired, but let me talk to you about the first reason why um, I left the mainstream nursing field as my primary source of income. My name is River Gale. I am a nurse. I still keep my RN and I'm a certified GAPS practitioner, which is what I love to do and what I want to do with the most of my time besides mama-ing my little baby Hosanna. So let me talk about this. Relationship is so important and it's being lost uh, very rapidly in our current day and age because of technology, because everyone's quarantining themselves, because everyone's polarized against each other, because it's all about being right. And um, the more that I work as a practitioner in this sort of outside the mainstream land field, the more I realize that my value to a client um, besides, do I know a couple things? Yes, I do. Do I know some practical tips and hacks and this, that, and the other? Yes. But my primary value is connecting with someone and helping and together learning where they're at, where they want to be, and what therapeutic interventions they are open to and that they are motivated towards and um, walking alongside them through that is like the most important thing. Um, are there a lot of nurses and doctors and specialists and famous GI, you know, famous specialists in the best hospitals who don't know some of the things that I've been trained in? Yes. Um, thank you, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride for training me and so many other great, amazing GAPS practitioners. But, um, that knowledge is not what makes me, is not the primary thing. I mean, it's it's one thing for sure. You gotta have some quality knowledge, but um, it's all about that connection um, and the journey and trust and trust. And these days, um, if you go to an appointment with a doctor, you wait in the waiting room for two hours and you see them for five minutes and it doesn't work. No, it does not work. It doesn't work guys and if you have a chronic condition you know how much it doesn't work you know how much I mean it might work for covering over your symptoms so you don't feel them anymore or deadening your symptoms but it doesn't work for getting to the root of the problem and figuring out how to uproot the problem um, yeah as a nurse I chose nursing because I wanted that relationship piece when I worked with people, I wanted to be a part of their health journey. I didn't want to be in that position that the doctor was in where because of insurance and because of numbers that you have to meet, you just can meet with a client for literally like five, 10 minutes. And you can spend five, 10 minutes looking at their chart before and after, and then maybe an hour charting after that. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I want more time with my clients. You know, nurses, they have a smaller number of clients so they get more time. And uh, that's why I went into nursing. That's why a lot of people go into nursing or become nurse practitioners because they think they'll have more time and they'll have more of a relationship, um, which is partially true. As nursing progresses and as the healthcare system that we currently are engaged in progresses, that window of time just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And the number of clients that nurses are assigned is like more and more and more and more and more and more. And the amount of time that nurses required to be reporting to various agencies, all these statistics and charting and reports is more and more and more and more and more. And all of that time wasted communicating with these big conglomerate bureaucratic software things, which are basically I would say the primary function seems to me to be preventing hospitals or practices from being sued, basically, or to say, we did something. And we spend so much time doing that that we don't have time to have relationship with clients, which is really sad. It is really sad. 
And um, there's something about the culture of medicine where there's this professionalism. We call it professionalism, but it's really cold stone heartedness. <laughs> And there's something about having like healthy boundaries between you and a client because um, by removing yourself a little bit emotionally, you can help them because you have a clear mind and you can help lead them, you know, down a path that they want to go and they feel like they're in chaos with all their emotions. But there's also something about connecting with a client, empathizing with a client, advocating for a client that only happens when you have a relationship with them, when you care about them genuinely and you allow yourself to feel the loss when they're doing poorly and to feel encouraged when they're doing well. And um, yeah, we need, to, we need to get back to that. So now in my practice, in my current practice with the Yoans Collective, I really love that I get to kind of meet and chat with clients for a little bit before signing on with them just to make sure that what I do aligns with relevance to their particular situation and uh, see if we connect if, um, you know, that we're going to be working together on a journey, you know, and do we have that connection that we can work together because it's not just like being coworkers, even though you're paying me. <laughs> We're a team and uh, we need to be able to work together. So not all personalities work together and that's fine. Go find another GAPS practitioner. Um, find someone you jive with who speaks your first language. That's good to do. Um, yeah, so that's what I have to say about relationships. As I was editing this, I wanted to come back and just cut in and mention that I came to this realization on a deeper level when I found myself in need of a professional practitioner of some kind. And um, <clears throat> it was in the recovery process from having baby Hosanna. I found that I needed a um, pelvic floor therapist, which I've never heard of much before and was nervous. And I was like, do I really need to talk to this person? Could I read a book? Could I take an online course? And um, in the place that I was at, um, I needed her <laughs> and not just some information. And, <clears throat> and in the time I spent with her, was there some great revelatory thing that was super specific to me that had I couldn't have possibly found in a book or a course or online? Not really, but um, the personalized emotional journey I was able to take with her retelling my situation and the reassurance that I received from her and just working together to kind of journey towards something better than where I was at was what I needed. And um, she was very non-clinical in her approach, not that she was not professional, but she was very personal. She's very human, sharing her own stories and taking her time to just talk about life and play with baby Hosanna while we were talking. And um, yeah, so thanks out there. I just want to give a shout out to Flourish Pelvic Health. If you're in the Northeast, Philadelphia area or northeast of the northeast Philadelphia area totally check her out she's awesome I feel the same way about my midwives love my home birth midwives wherever you are out there Sam Magpie and Carolina <laughs> you guys are awesome I aspire to be as relationally in tune as you guys if you want to hear more about the other reasons why I left mainstream nursing as my main thing, totally subscribe, click the bell, like this thing, comment below, and stay tuned for the next episode. This has been Robots vs. Relationship. I'm very grateful and privileged to have the opportunity to step away from that robotic um, work environment and way of interacting with other humans <laughs> as a job. So yeah, thank you guys for supporting my channel. And um, if you want to reach out, have a 15 minute coffee chat with me for free to talk about your journey and your situation. 
See the link below. I love the chat. See ya. Bye.